The first place most new Photoshop users think of when changing colors is the Tools panel. The foreground and background color pickers are located at the bottom of the Tools panel. In our screenshot included on this slide, they are represented by a black and a white square or color swatches. The black color on the left side is the foreground color. The white color on the right is the background color. If you double click either square swatch icon, it will launch the color picker, which is also shown in this slide. Users can then input specific color settings like, and you can see it on the screen here, HSB, RGB, LAB, CMYK, and hexadecimal codes, which are web codes. Most times, though, users will adjust the color visually by choosing a hue, which just basically means color, um, along the vertical slider. And so you can see it here in both of the screenshots. You choose a color that you want to work within. And then choosing a saturation and brightness level for that specific hue and that is chosen in the bigger visual area which is represented by the square. Um, some key things to note about the color picker is that the, the higher you go up on the visual square is the brighter the image will be and then the darker it will be at the bottom and it will be more saturated to the right and so you can see that it's red in the picture and less saturated to the left which you can see eventually there's no red left in it and it turns to white. In the example provided, the same hue is selected on both screenshots. You can, if you look closely at the vertical slider on both examples, the slider is pushed all the way to the bottom where the red hue would be selected. But the saturations and the brightness settings are different. One will produce a relatively bright red color, while the other will be a very dark gray color with red undertones. To use the color picker, click on the foreground and background colored square on the tools panel, or you can even do this on the color panel, and we've created a little pop out to show you. This is the color panel, which we haven't talked about yet, but anytime you see these icons, the left side means the foreground color, and the right side means the background color, and you can click on either of them anywhere you see them to launch the foreground and background color pickers. Once the dialog box has been launched, click on a color on the vertical ramp, which we decided was the hue slider. Um, or you can then choose saturation and brightness variations. Um, when you are done, you can select OK to select your color, but you don't have to choose your color that way. Um, you can enter specific percentages or values for your color if you know what they are. And so maybe you're working in a different program and you know that the color you want to use has a red, green, and blue value of 103, 82, 52 or you know it has a CMYK value of 33%, 61%, 82%, or 21%, you could manually enter those. You could also reverse engineer this as well, so you're working in Photoshop and you like this, this brown color here, you could then use that to write down the settings so you can transfer that to other graphic arts programs. In addition, if you know what the hexadecimal code is for a color that you want to use for your project, maybe you're working with a project for the web, you can enter a hexadecimal code value here, and then also that will reverse engineer. So if you choose a nice orange or brown color, whatever the color is, it will also give you the hexadecimal code. The foreground and background color settings are used for more than just selecting color. They become the default brush colors, unless you change them, when using the brush, pencil, mixer brush tools, etc. When working with a document with a colored background, they're also used to apply color in certain situations when you cut or make delete actions, or you activate cut or delete actions. The foreground and background colors can also be selected by default when filling color, extending canvas size, and modifying layer masks. In addition, there are some filters that use foreground and background colors as part of their fill filter application process. Here's an example of a filter directly affected by the background color. Both versions of the filter have been applied with the exact same settings. The only difference is before I went into the filter settings, I changed the background color from red to blue or vice versa. And so you can see the top example here. It is the same exact filter. And if you look at closely, it, you can see all the different textures are exactly the same. Just in one image, all of those effects ended up being red because the background color was red and then they ended up being this blue color because the background color in my on my tools panel ended up being blue. And the same thing applies to other filters. So this is the same filter, I just did some more effects to it. But if you look closely, you can see because the background color was blue, the undertones on this rose here, you now have bluish green showing through because the effect pulled the color from the background. The color happened to be blue and that's what ended up being created. 
But on the right hand side, these two bottom examples have the same exact settings. The only difference is the background color was red. And so now those undertones are not sticking out. And so I don't want to say one is right or wrong, but they give two completely different results.